Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert, and you join me in the hallowed halls of Crown Lane Studio. Thank you to John Merriman for having me for the day. It's um, coming. Fabulous, this place is absolutely amazing. Tell us a little bit about how it became and how you started it and um, stuff. Okay. Goes back a little way. Um, we're talking about yeah, it'll be our ten year anniversary in September, so we're 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 very much looking forward to that. Um, yeah, we started it with just this one room that we're in, mm -hmm. um, which was in an old disused uh, car rental building, and uh, we we built this one room in a cavernous cave of a garage, and then uh, slowly, um, with my lovely father's help, we we built each room as we went. So along. it has been a DIY. Oh, completely. Project. Yeah, and Dad's friend's a builder, and uh, another friend of mine's an architect. So, together we put together um, plans for it, and uh, we forgot cupboards. That's the <laughs> that's the big thing. If you're building a studio, you need space to store Storage. stuff. And and we yeah. Because drums just evaporate, don't they? And yeah, and exactly, things. exactly. So yeah, corridors are full of stuff, but um, yeah. Storage space is, is something that we'd love to have more of. But other than that, yeah, we've got this room that we're in, the control room, um, a lovely live room that's attached to it, which is just perfect for drums, which I guess means it's perfect for a heck of a lot. Because you're also a drummer, aren't you? I am. I'm amongst friends. Um, <laughs> and so, a lefty. Yeah, a fellow a fellow lefty <laughs> is always always good, if not a little weird. Um, so, you, but you've also now expanded into kind of the rehearsal studio space because mm -hmm. you've got the live room next door and you've got another room, haven't you? Yeah, we're very lucky that we've got two entrances. So, our daytime entrance is through a beautiful coffee shop, fair trade, and lovely stuff that a friend runs, nothing to do with us. Um, and that's where all our posh guests come. And then people like you and others come, <laughs> come through the back. The tradesman's entrance. Exactly, yeah. which is where the rehearsal bands come in. So, we shut this door and we make the control room um, totally cut off and locked away. And the room's used in the evenings for rehearsal rooms so um, and that's how as a studio in this day and age we've uh, sort of uh, survived and and it really helps out we'll talk a little bit about gear in a minute but obviously you've got this space now you're you've kind of you're kind of trying to market yourself in a certain direction aren't you certain musical styles and mm -hmm. genres and things mm -hmm. which is a bit bit more left of center i think uh, we're always left of center um particularly um yeah with, with music and um, so jazz world music folk and classical it sounds quite broad but um it's basically um looking at the core of what is and how how can you capture an instrument sounding the absolute best you can and focusing on the genres that that do that so jazz folk world and classical are all genres where it's all about the actual sound of, of an organic instrument so um, we spend a lot of time trying to make sure that our mics and all our gear is suited to that more than I'd say um, looking at recording amps, for example, mm -hmm. or um, electronic music or samples, which we, we do very little of, if any. Um, but yeah, most of the time we're looking at capturing the best sound we can from organic instruments. And I love the fact that we've been ch chatting about all things analog and stuff. There's a proper console, a proper analog console. Yeah, made by uh, uh, John Oram. And Who's in, relatively um, local. He is, he's just down the road in Tunbridge. Um, and yeah, we've had to visit him a couple of times. Um, it, it's a beautiful desk um, and do, does everything we could ever dream of. The, the EQ is just... It's, well, it's, it's Trident Series EQ, isn't it? I don't know if we're allowed to say that, but yeah. It's, well, it's got a Trident badge on it. It's oh, right. that's going to have a sticker on it. <laughs> 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 um, but I took the sticker off, um, and the power supply still says Trident, but I don't think that should either. But the um, it is it's John Orm's desk, beautiful sound. The EQ is amazing. The preamps out this world. Re really love the sound of, of the desk um, and uh, faders, beautiful. Um, the, the master section, I got a few gripes with that. Just the the, the buttons don't feel the highest of quality, um, but I guess. In terms of compromises, no one hears the sound of the button at the end of the day. Exactly. People hear the mic priest, the, 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 the routing and the path and stuff like that. And it's, it's not, as someone who's about to take the, the analog plunge. Do it. it. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> You've it, done it. I've already done it. <laughs> I'm, I'm ever so committed. Um, and probably should be, but that's another story. Um, but it's nice to see a studio doing it the proper way, I think. Actually, you know, tracking. It suits us. 
it definitely suits us. So um, all our rooms are tie lined to here, mm -hmm. so um, we can um, and regularly do have uh, the drums next door in the control room. We'll have the singer in here, um, and then we've got a guitar amp cellar down the end, which is one of the best things we could have done, just to tie line in a tiny little space. Get rid of guitar amps. Exactly, get them down there. They can make it sound good. And then um, room two down the corridor with tie lines as well, and you can have um, string quartet, brass section, or stack of amps in there as well, all isolated as well, um, all coming through. And without this, baby, yeah, we'd struggle. Mm. It's, it's, it's brilliant. And, and the, the meter bridge, it's just spot on. It's perfect. And you're running Pro Tools, you're on 12? We're, we're fully up to date, yeah. 12.6? Had the most hellish update last week. Um, yeah, 12.6 where um, yeah, their helplines were down for the whole day and uh, I suggested in an email that they could put that on social media, which they did immediately, I'd give them credit for it, but after six hours and two phone calls, both times on hold for two hours. Yeah. That's long. It's a, it's a long time, it's a long time when you're sat twiddling your thumbs. Yeah, and pay for their help. Yeah. Yeah, that's not very helpful. Yeah, let's, let's not go too far down that road. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it works now and we love it. Yeah. All the upgrade is so worth it. Mm, really. It's definitely worth it. And actually, Looking around, there's not that much other, other outboards you've got. I mean, say, so I love the, the warm 76s. Mm -hmm. I've got a pair of those. They are gorgeous. Yeah, we love them. Uh, kick drum and snare for me. That's just, nice. That's where, where I live. What, what else have we got? Uh, Safe Sound Audio, they've gone now. Yeah. They went two years ago. Um, that's a shame. Gorgeous compressor, that. Really, really love that. Um, yeah, but most of the outboard, we get if we haven't used it for a little while, get rid of it. Mm. Always borrow it if we need it. Yeah, that all. FX or over the river? Yeah, completely. <laughs> completely. Um, so yeah, we we would rather have we'd rather keep stripping back and and people who come to use the the studio they don't want to pay for a whole load of gear that they're not using. Mm. They they want to be able to know that what they're paying for they're getting a hundred percent of what they're paying for. And I think sometimes when you come in and you see all this gear that actually oh we're not using that on your session is it, well, why, it does something why, cheap. Why are you not exactly? <laughs> why am I not worthy of that particular but, box? Exactly. So it, it's lovely. Yeah, we we end up using pretty much everything on on especially the bigger sessions. Yeah, DBX. Stuff's great. Mm -hmm. um, Sounds out. Is that the bass one? Yeah. The, the, wow. Yeah, I heard that on a recording once, and uh, a friend of mine, producer Matt Hyde, um, he's amazing. He's in a completely different genre. He does a lot of the sort of metal and, and heavier rock stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I just asked him once, how does he get his bass sounding amazing? And he said it was that. So it's as good a reason as any. Bought it. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And you're also running, uh, as your interface, you're running the SSL Alpha Link, aren't you? It's how amazing. are you finding that? It's, it's been. I'd say it's been glitch free. Occasionally I've had to um, uh, break the Mac and go in the back door to make it still compatible with mm -hmm. the various upgrades because they've stopped running upgrades on it now, yeah. which is a bit of a pain. And eventually when we upgrade our Mac, it'll no longer be compatible because mm -hmm. of the cards. So yeah. that'll be a bit of a pain. But as a, as a device and a sound. If it ain't broke. Don't and it fix hasn't. It. It's never caused us an issue in and of itself. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's a gorgeous bit of kit. With, with, with the way computers are going at the moment and lack of upgradeability and switchability and yeah. all that sort of stuff, it's, it's quite scary. I'm, you know, I think we're all going to be in that boat. If, those of us who are using cheese graters are going to be in that boat very, very soon. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, for, for now, this all works. And the fact that Pro Tools' is subscription suits a business like ours, where mm. we, you know, upgrading all the time is, is fine. And to pay, a, it actually works out cheaper for us than yeah. it would have done previously. Well, it's a business, it's a, a, a cost rather than an asset. That's right. Um, I think that's the right term. Yeah, well, it's no longer an asset, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the one. Mm. That's where I was going. It's gone from our asset list. Mm. We no longer... Well, like most software now. Yeah. So that was the major, uh, a major cost for us. But. It's interesting you say that because a lot of people are saying, oh, but I want to own it. And of course, nobody ever owns software. You simply own a license to use it. That's right. And I think as more and more companies, Adobe, um, all the plugin manufacturers are now jumping over to the subscription model slate. Um, uh, Soft tube, mm -hmm. just to name a couple that have done mm -hmm. it recently. Um, it seems to be working. Yeah, it suits us down to the ground. It doesn't suit a lot of our clients who will do some of the work at home or will do it in another studio. And, you know, for two months of the year, they might be using Pro Tools really heavily and then not for others. So it doesn't really work for them. But mm. yeah, for us. The other thing I want to chat about is obviously you've done, it's been a, it's been a, a DIY project, I suspect, with, as you said, some significant um, professional help. Mm -hmm. But you're also shooting the whole 
the green, waving the green flag very ah, heavily. We love it. Yeah, we we decided from very early on that we wanted to be the greenest studio that we could possibly be. And there, there are others like the premises in Hackney who have been really inspiring to us to see, you know, how they've done it and and, and the journey they've been on. Um, and it's very easy at the beginning to make massive changes. So for the first few years, we were winning green awards left, right and centre because we can, I mean, you change your lighting or you change your energy supplier and you, you do a few, I mean, we've got a whole blog post on our website all about all the changes we made. And we were reducing our energy bills year on year, sort of halving and halving at quarters and that. Now we're at the stage where we have to spend a heck of a lot of money investing and changing things. And, and the changes and improvements we're seeing are very negligible because mm. all the major changes are done. So, um, so, so, so tell us some of the things you have done because it's really important. I okay. Um, so first of all, we, we put together, this is, sounds dull, a procurement policy of, of how we're going to buy and, and checking that what we're buying is, it, where possible, delivered carbon neutrally. So that's the kind of last bit. And um, I'll give you an example. Our cabling, we decided to, to switch to Camford Audio in England mm -hmm. um, because the cables are made in the UK and uh, they're made sustainably in a factory which is right next door to where they distribute mm -hmm. and their delivery firm are carbon neutral. So it's a bloke pulling a pallet rather than going on a truck. Exactly, from China. Yeah. So... Um, I know I understand a lot of things have to be made in China, but um, where possible, we try to keep the shipping journeys down. So mm -hmm. that's one thing we did. Um, we've gone green on, uh, we changed our energy to a small company up up north called, uh, they're amazing, Loco2. Mm -hmm. um, they've, been, they've been brilliant. So all our power is hydroelectrically produced. And one thing that anyone can do is if you approach your local council, there are always grants for going green. Um, so we just heard yesterday that our solar panel bid has been accepted and they will pay 50%. So to get 50% off the cost of solar panels, and it's not, I mean, we will pay for it. We will make the money back in, uh, they reckon about seven or eight years because mm. um, we've got a massive roof. Yeah. Um, but the um, actual, we're not so worried about that. We, we, we would rather be completely green where we can. As someone who also has solar panels, mm. um, the feed-in tariff numbers have gone, yes. have dwindled. It used to be something like 25p a kilowatt. And That's right. They, they, it's now seven, if you're lucky, seven and a half. That's right. Yeah, we're definitely not doing it for financial reasons. And a lot of the going green thing is advertised to businesses is that they will save money. And, and yes, you do if you change all your lighting and stuff. But I think you've got to do it because you, you care for the planet as well. Mm. It's not just a financial reason. And actually, light bulbs, things like that, generally, everyone goes, oh, you know... Um, they're so much more expensive. Well, that a that's not that's just not true anymore. Yeah. And b they last five thousand times longer than Completely. conventional filament or um, what are they called uh, halogen tubes. Fluorescent tubes, yeah. yeah. Fluorescent tubes. So, and actually, for the sort of thing we're doing today, the light is generally better as well. Yeah. Because it's not it's not so yellow. It's 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 a it's a much nicer. I hope we're looking good. <laughs> I was about to say by the time I finish with it, but that's definitely not not an area of my expertise. As people who've watched a million of these will probably testify. Um, so cutting way way back, how did you come to say want to do this whole studio thing in the first place? Um, are you a musician first and foremost, or worse, a bass player? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm glad you didn't say drummer. Well, no. <laughs> you're a drummer. <laughs> Not going to um, happen. <laughs> I, I got into um, sound. I, I've always been obsessed with tape recorders, recording and stuff at home, and just lo loved as a kid to try. Well, in fact, there was one song. Um, it was the song Something Inside So Strong, mm -hmm. and I'd recorded it off the radio. Loved it. I'd accidentally pressed record half in, you know, when you just record a little bit over the tape and mm -hmm. it ruins it. And and as a, um, I think I was nine, I thought if I sing that little bit and press record, I could fix the hole. Mm -hmm. And that was where I think I started to learn that it's not quite that easy to edit and drop in um, because my little unbroken voice singing something inside and that bit didn't quite fill the gap. No. So I learned very well, you quickly. Got... Exactly, all that first yeah. and yeah. afterwards. <laughs> so I made, I made it worse. Um, but I think it was that that originally made me think oh, this editing thing is amazing this how can you you know how can you create sound i remember my dad's guitar he, he wasn't great um but he had a guitar that was great um i remember putting my ear to the sound the the i don't even know what's it called the body of sound the guitar hole? the body some the, of it yeah. yeah and thinking just the resonance and the the sound of this beast were close up compared to further away was and that was i'm probably six or seven or something mm -hmm. so um yeah i just love sound and i i went to uni, did a, a music degree, um, classical music. So a, a traditional kind of classical mm. music degree? Yeah. As a percussionist? Yeah, right. yeah, percussionist. Uh, full mallet, still got the wounds uh, from the marimba. Um, 
and yeah, it really enjoyed that. And then nearer the end, really got into doing um, audio engineering and had a great lecturer. And we, uh, I, I sneakily tried to record every event that went on. And there were some some great acts that came to the university that I had the privilege of recording. And back then, it was quite a rare thing to have a performance recorded at, at uni, um, 98, 99. Um, and um, so using those recordings, I would then send them to the companies and ask them to um, write a little review of it so I've got some quite nice little credits from some big organizations from when I was only 19 mm. and they helped sort of start the journey and I, you know I'd say to anyone just just record everything you can and get feedback it's so useful so what was the catalyst or what was the moment where you said you know what I can I can make a business of this I, I didn't think I could um, and I, it was one of those um, I've been putting it off for a long time and I was a high school music teacher, loved every day of it. Um, Locally or? Yeah, just, just down the road, um, Cheam High School, um, right. a brilliant high school. Um, Are you originally from this part of the world, sort of south, south, yeah, south I, west I, London? Yeah, I, I live in Morden, my kids are at school in Morden, I uh, was born here, go on holiday here, it's, ama <laughs> it's an amazing area. <laughs> Um, no, Morden is a f little forgotten town that, that I love dearly, but um, I don't share that love with many other people. But um, yeah, it's a great town. Um, so yeah, I've always lived here, taught there. And then my wife and I had a, a river accident where our car got swept down a river. Um, could go into the details, won't bore you. Um, and it was that that made us both go flipping it. Life's precious. We need to grab it. What are the things we want to do? So um, it was that really that made us think, let's let's do this thing that I've always wanted to do so with my father's help we um, started off with this bit of land and built this control room and at first I was still teaching a bit and then as quickly as I could so that was now coming up 10 years ago just went we've got to take this risk and we just went all out and got a lot of help from as many people as I could possibly find uh, uh, learn early on don't try and do everything yourself just mm -hmm. get people who you trust and yeah There's, yeah I think certainly stuff we've had on the blog recently where um, DIY will get you so far mm, completely but there are certain things you need professionals to do not only legally but from a safety point of view and completely. from a they can probably do things better than we can that's right especially things like pricing and, and anything to do with finance I mean I'm, I'm never going to get that right and getting people who know what they're doing really helped uh, uh, yeah drummers with drummers and anything above four <laughs> I can do five just yeah take five <laughs> uh, uh, a friend of mine was. Um, I saw a video and he said, um, "Do you know how drummers play in seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds right. Yeah, it's about right. <laughs> um, so, do you advertise locally, or do people just know you're here, or um, are, are you involved in the community, or how, how, do, how do people find, how do people know that?" Um, a bit, a bit of both, a bit of both. Um, I'm a bit of a geek, so I've still got the first Excel spreadsheet I made when I started off, and I put down everybody who I knew, how I knew them, and how they could help me with my business. Obviously, they don't know that. <laughs> um, and I approached them all and, and got them involved. And that, was, that spreadsheet is still the one that I use to this day, which is now on, I think we're on row 1,700 and something. And anyone who comes through, I always put how I know them. So mm -hmm. if they ring up, I can always immediately, oh, I can't picture who that is, Oh, you're the person who oh, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. So um, I've always done that, and that's really helped. So the word of mouth thing, I can see from that chart, most of our work is word of mouth. Um, and then last couple of years, we've, we've applied for a few different awards, um, thinking the business is in good shape. I'm really proud of it. I want others to know. And uh, we went for a few of the local awards. Um, one year didn't get anywhere. The second year, my wife helped me with the, uh, well, in fact, she did the forms, and, mm -hmm. and we won two categories, came runner up in another. And then at the end of the night, while we were sort of getting ready to go, we won overall best business in Merton. So we were over the moon by that. And for, for a music industry, um, we, we've never done anything in the music industry at all. We kind of have just stayed as a com community focused in terms of what I do as an individual. Um, but in terms of as a professional, we are very much trying to make sure that we meet musicians where their needs are, as opposed to going to the music industry and being involved with that. So yeah, we, we're off the beaten track. That's kind of nice though, because we, we were chatting and saying, we know a few sort of similar people in the industry and um, sort of local music suppliers, shops even. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, so you're, you're vibe is very much like mine support the local guys support the Completely. um and you're involved with the local chamber of commerce aren't you yeah merton chamber of commerce the second biggest chamber in london um they're 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 awesome um that's how we've 
I mean, I've only been I'm on their board now, but previous to that, I just used their services and went to as many free workshops as I could. And pretty much any area has got business workshops and they're, they're so cheap. If a, if a chamber's running them, chances are they're subsidised somewhere along the lines. And you can get just amazing advice without having to pay hundreds and hundreds or thousands for, for training. And, yeah. and that's, that's helped you from a business point of view as well? Yeah, massively. And networking. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's one of the things that people forget about, that although we might love all this sort of stuff, mm -hmm. at some point you need to fill out a spreadsheet and at some point you need to fill out a profit and loss mm -hmm. and all those sort of things. As a business, completely, we need to do those things. Yeah. Whether you're a self-employed musician, drummer, studio engineer, freelancer, the business side of the... Uh, it's, it's called the music business or the music industry for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, You've probably got an accountant who sits in an office somewhere and, right. and, and eventually looks over and assigns off the numbers. Um, some people don't have. I, I think everyone who works for themselves should have because, trust me, they know numbers above four. Completely, completely. It really helps. We found that actually people are um, less interested in the gear. I mean, I can't remember the last time someone phoned up. Um, we get probably on average 10 phone calls a day, I guess. Um, not all turn to work, although I'd love that to be the case. Um, but I can't think in the last few years anyone that has asked about gear. So I don't think people care about the gear. They care about the end results and also the story behind everything. So we're on our website, we're doing a whole new series of videos called Your Story. And we're looking at um, the stories of the artists that have been through here because they're more interesting often. And then it makes you understand the music mm -hmm. if you know their backstory. Um, and also the backstory of the studio here. People going to our bathroom here and we've got little facts about the studio and little interesting stories and people love that almost more than um than, than the fact that we've got a desk that sounds amazing which mm. i obviously love because i have to work with it but they don't they just want a good end result and and the story along the way i mean we, we always say that um the the point that they're with us is such a tiny point sort of um chronologically mm. in their life they've done all their music stuff learning touring performing writing they're with us for a tiny tiny little bit of time and then they're gone but it's such a signif significant time that that part of their story is is often it means a lot to them mm -hmm. so we try and make sure that this point while they're here it's a great experience from start to finish if we can very cool um so we've already talked about the fact that you deal with lots of different types of music mm -hmm. um which presumably means that your um Kit selection, obviously you've got a fantastic sounding console, mm -hmm. but you need to have a many and various plethora of microphones and looking over your shoulder, there's quite an awesome mic locker of, <laughs> of loveliness. Um, but the only one that's uh, not buried under glass mm -hmm. is um, one of my particular favourites as well. The Aria? The Aria. Ah, we love the Aria. We, um, yeah, I, I used to put it back in the mic cabinet, but it's, it's a waste of time. We leave it on the stand all the time uh, and we use it on everything. Even recently, we had a singer whose voice it didn't suit um, and we used uh, a, an additional mic. But I still tracked it with the Aria as well. Mm -hmm. And we've actually, in the end, used a blend. And the blend was even better than just the one that sounded better than the Aria originally for her voice. But um, yeah, for most things, we use the Aria. It's, um, it's an awesome microphone. And I can wax lyrical about that thing till the metaphorical cows come home. Um, but I noticed an awful, awful lot of, say, there's a set of 414s or 414s, depending on where you're from in the world. Is that an M49? Norman? That's correct, yeah. So we've got Neumann in there, the, the 414s, the Sigma we use a, an awful lot. That's the, the ribbon. The, yeah, so For violin, it's, it's, that's awesome. Yeah, Vi um, violin and cello. Um, we did a sax, cello session sax, last week. Saxophone is, again, another one. Ribbon, okay. Ribbons on sax sound great. Wow. I, I used to use it um, underneath the snare. Right. Um, until uh, only on jazz, mm -hmm. um, and until I had a, an occasion where, because I, I said, just be careful because it, it's not that it's mm -hmm. not going to survive much. Um, went out of a lunch break, came back, and someone had just been messing on the kit, which is normally fine, but not with that under it. No. So um, Trevor and Lisa at Suntronics amazingly sent um, sorted out a new ribbon for that and their lifetime warranty. Trust it. Yeah, it, it's it's true. Um, so that's up and running and working again. And yeah, use it on everything. Mm. Love it. And so the kick, uh, the kit mics you've got, the DM1 S and Ts and stuff. Yeah, it it seems like we like Sontronics here. Um, the only random I've got, got a problem with that. I love that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the random um, mic that that we found is just amazing is the STC80, which is a vocal mic, dynamic vocal mic that Sontronics mm. make. Um, we uh, 
started to use that on the snare instead mm -hmm. of the 57, which we'd always used and which a lot As of, everyone yeah, uses, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would just say try it. It's a great price. Um, I'm going to. I want to go back. <laughs> it's an amazing mic on the snare. Just just m miraculous results from it. Um, there, there's just an air that we always found we were having to add. And the EQ on the desk, we love doing. But our aim is always to try and get the yeah, source got to do it. Yeah. the best we can. And, and that has just been giving us something more than the 57 ever did on the snare. I'm going to try that. I like that. Um, what do you, what, I noticed that you've got a uh, Pearl Masters in there. Is that is that your kit of old and it's just migrated in here? Because that's a fabulous sounding kit. Yeah. Not terribly jazz though. No, that's right. So we've got we've got two Pearl Masters kits here, 20 inch and a 22 inch, mm -hmm. um, Birch and Maple. They're both great for rock and pop. Um, and but not a jazz kit. No. Um, so we uh, approached Andrew at uh, Liberty Drums mm -hmm. up north and... Uh, yeah, I understood half the phone call um, with Andrew, <laughs> and he's put together this lovely kit for us. And uh, it's very, very simple, small, small kick, um, two toms. Um, cost us an arm and a leg, but it's it's um, absolutely out of this world. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I mean, the Pearl Masters are obviously amazing drums, mm -hmm. first class, but the uh, the Liberty is in a league of its own as a kit. It's amazing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, as a drummer. I know what I want to hear in a drum kit yeah. sound, be it jazz, rock, pop, funk, whatever. Yeah. Um, and getting it right at the point of source. That's right. It's just so important. And and it's actually not that difficult, Completely. I don't think. It's it's about going in the room and listening to it. Mm, completely. And we found that cymbals, cymbals and snare, um, if, you, if you've got some spare cymbals that you love, that you just keep spare, to one side, it just helps so often on a recording session where you've got a, drum, a drummer who's amazingly competent but they they know the symbols they've got mm -hmm. um and they're not always the best for recording not always and just to be able to go let's try this one uh, let's try this one we've actually switched to um uh, dream symbols recently. Do you know what i was about to say if you haven't tried dream symbols <laughs> you really need to try them out because drummer nerd alert so sorry about that um they're half the price of zildjians and sabians mm -hmm. and actually they record really really well yeah and as a um, as a eco studio, which we are, they, they re recycle. They recycle, yeah. and they do this um, the thing where they chuck in all these old symbols that are B eight and above, mm -hmm. um, and once a year make a kind of a hybrid run. A hybrid, don't they? Sort or of they things. do. Um, I haven't tried them. or um, yeah. what they called um, the weird the little bell crop, crop circle things and bells and stuff. Yeah, but I think I've actually in the studio. I think most of the stuff I record now is on Dream. Yeah, because. They're amazing. It, it just works. Yeah. No point having great mics and rubbish cymbals. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. And and actually not they, and and rubbish. Great great drums mm -hmm. with knackered heads. Completely. Um, yeah. Emperor Ambassador, are you? Oh, uh, see now I'm Ambassador Snare. I might have just been turned to. You're not Evans, are you? I might have just been turned to Evans uh, recently. Okay. Yeah. We because uh, selfishly because we're a rehearsal studio as well. Evans don't last as long, we find. So we use Remo on, because they, they just are a little bit more durable. Mm. I agree, they sound slightly better sometimes. But. Don't get me wrong, I've, I've only, I've been playing 20, hang on, uh, oh no, more than that, 35 years. You're not that old, are you? I know, I'm, I'm not that old, no. Uh. Um, and up until this last year, I've been using Remo. Okay. But, I, it's funny, I found exactly, absolutely the opposite. I found that the Evans have a, a more consistent sound for longer. Okay, how interesting. Um, whereas the Remos will probably last longer, mm -hmm. but I think they, to use a Formula One term, mm -hmm. they fall off the cliff a bit quicker. Okay. Where, whereas the and Evans it, tend to very slowly fall off, okay. whereas the Remos are like, and then they're gone, and yeah. they sound That's like a bag of spanners. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I, I, you know, I think that depends on sticks, drummer, yeah, style we, of music. We have no choice over the drummers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, I've got me or me. That's right. Or uh, or me. Yeah, we've got two hundred and something users of the uh, online booking. So, yeah, I don't have much say over who hits them. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I'd I'd be very. Um, what's the word? I'd I'd be very upset if I I know I know I couldn't run a rehearsal studio for that reason. <laughs> I, I'd be like. You're doing it wrong. That's right. We spent. I mean, I, I being a drummer helps. I think with it, with it being a rehearsal studio because I'm replacing felts, replacing wing nuts, and if you keep on top of it, 
everyone looks after it and everyone respects it. And there is nothing worse as a drummer going to a rehearsal studio and going, do you know what? This is rubbish. Completely. That's, that's, uh, the, that's, that's right. the most, or even actually some recording studios I've turned up and gone, oh, I'm really sorry, but this is unplayable. Yeah, completely. I hope no one's ever said that here. So it's not all about Morden. No. The start or end of the Northern Line, who knows? But, um, but you're also involved in studios a little bit farther, further afield, aren't you? Yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're involved with a charity called Zim Kids, who are based in Zimbabwe. Um, Which in, is not around the corner. It's not, no. It's, it's, I think it's about 6,000 miles away, yeah. Um, and uh, we go out there as often as we can. Um, and one of the things we noticed was that they, the charity works a lot with, um, with orphans and vulnerable families. Um, and one of the things they do is they've got a great employment uh, education um, stream for the kids. Um, and as they're getting near 18, they're learning a lot about farming and a lot of the rural um, skills that they need. Um, and I just noticed a massive shift compared to um, here and the technology advancements and realising that these kids are going to get left behind. Um, and so we started doing a project out there only this um, last um, January 2016, um, where we've converted a, a building into a, a studio space. Um, but they have a big problem that they don't have electricity for more than a couple of hours a day. Oh, that could be an issue. Mm. So how are you... Well, a, a, what are you running? Obviously, a mobile recording rig of some variety. What are you running and how are you running it? Well, as yet, we're not running anything. Right. Um, so we've, we've created the space, we've built the rooms, we've put the glass between the two, um, and we've really wanted the local people to do it. So when I say we've built a studio, we really haven't. We've we've come up with concepts and we've said, what do you reckon? Um, and they've taken it in their direction. And some of the things we think, what are you doing? And But I'd rather they owned it completely rather than um, guy from Morden comes in, saves the day. Um, <laughs> that's not what it's about at all. Um, so Zim Kids um, have this brilliant training project that they want to make it a bit more multimedia as well. And I think that's the way everything's going. You, you can't just say, no, this is what I do. Um, you've got to be as open as you can. So they're, they're doing filming in there as well, which they've already started doing. We've built an infinity wall, um, yeah. which trying to describe that to someone who doesn't speak English was, was watch brilliant. A, watch an Apple ad. Oh, you don't know who Apple are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they built an infinity wall, um, green screened it, um, they, they've done a really good job. Um, but sound wise, we've been waiting for technology to catch up with battery life. Mm -hmm. um, because the power is only on for a few hours a day and it cuts out so regularly, everything has got to be battery powered. So we're looking for some sponsors that will want to um, get behind this that we can, so we can actually have computers. Um, speakers are the big issue, battery powered decent speakers that mm. don't cost gazillions of pounds. Um, so that everything can be battery powered so that when the power fluctuates as it regularly does cuts out completely for sometimes days on end it will mean that it shouldn't interrupt the flow creatively and um, we've already had while i was out there we met a few people who would give these students once they've got some basic knowledge um, employment options so in a country with 97 percent 97 percent unemployment um, the fact that this char charity is now going to be able to get children into work placements is is amazing that's a really scarily big number as well, isn't it? We, we moan about having 4%? Mm, yeah, pretty like much that. the opposite here. Yeah, absolute about face. So talking about multimedia and mm -hmm. other stuff, mm -hmm. I've, we've been wandering around and you've done a very similar thing to what I've done. Mm -hmm. GoPros everywhere, GoPro mounts and stuff and, and tracks for cameras and things. So you're obviously thinking not just music and sound, you're thinking video and and that sort of stuff as well. Completely, yeah. We've got a little laminated sheet which has got the instructions on how to use GoPros. We give that to the client. If they want to use it, we give it to them before as a PDF. They can then turn up an hour before, suss out the GoPros and use them themselves. So we don't have to. But um, it, it's really good for us because promotion-wise, people get to see the studios mm -hmm. and um, people get to talk about them. And um, yeah, we don't have to do anything. They run themselves. And uh, to have, th we've just got three. Mm -hmm. um, put a track in recently, just along here, which runs along the whole window. Um, just have some movement in the shots. Mm. It's brilliant. Um, and it's, it's all done a little bit DIY, but it works a treat. If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Completely. Um, and I'm, sorry, I don't know the guys from GoPro, but mm -hmm. I suspect they've done very well out of mobile at tiny cameras. <laughs> because let's face it, I've got, half a dozen you've right. got a few yeah everyone i know who's sort of in this industry is now going yeah but cameras we can put them on everything and, and it's right. it, and it's really cool it's good fun that's right it took them a while to come up with a microphone adapter it took them several years but when they did i think they suddenly realized there's a whole market out there that will be using them mm. not just surfers 
<laughs> yeah, surf surfers, wind, snow, That's or, right. it's or otherwise. the same shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get me one of those um, the drone. drones as well. That's a let's have it. <laughs> <laughs> John, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, thanks for fact, coming. Actually, we should do this for oh, the a, lefty. A, a, as being, being fellow exactly. lefties. Um, we'll put links on the podcast um, notes and stuff to, to find you and find the web, find the studio and stuff. Great. But um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for taking time out to show us around and great. stuff. Um, and um, hopefully we'll see you again soon for some more podcast extra action.